This is an art attack? This is an art attack. This is Art Attack! Nice to see you again. Now then, are you one of these people who suffers from broken shelving or a lack of space in your bedroom to store your books? What you need is a heavyweight bookend. And here it is. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. Right, you sit there and watch. You might learn something. Take a paper bag that's roughly the same size as a bag of sugar. Now, it can be an old sugar bag or even an old flour bag. And three-quarter fill it with pebbles or stones or gravel or anything you can get from your garden. Just something to make it nice and fat and chunky and heavy. Then scrunch your bag closed like that. Take some sticky tape and just tape it closed. Then take an old piece of newspaper and scrunch that up and just scrunch it roughly into an L shape. Now this is always good stuff to model with because you can bend it into different shapes. There you are. There's an L shape. I'm just going to tape it into place like that and then tape it onto the bottom of my bag. Like that. And then do another leg the same way. Tape that onto the bottom of your bag. There, like that. You just put the two of them together. It doesn't have to be neat at this point. Just keep modelling it as you're going. And here's a tip. If you can make your legs as chunky as possible and sticking out to the front, then your heavyweight bookend will take the weight of your books a little later on. And then build the rest of the body up, just putting on some paper arms in exactly the same way as you put the legs on. And again, I'll keep saying it, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. And then just up a scrunched up ball of paper for the head, right on the top, with a bit of tape. Then when you've got it to that stage, take some lengths of one of my favourite materials, this, loo roll, or tissue paper. And you can just wrap it round the body of your heavyweight bookend like that. Looks like a little cloak at this point, doesn't it? And then mix some PVA glue, equal parts with water, just the old PVA school glue, in the white squidgy bottles, and literally slop it on to your body like that. And you see what starts to happen there? The glue starts to soak into your tissue paper and starts to just bind it to your newspaper. And just cover the whole of your heavyweight body. And it's a good idea to do two layers of this. I won't do it all, just do that bit to show you. And leave it to one side to dry, probably overnight. Oh, and it's dry, it'll look something like that. Look at that. Now, it looks a bit like an Egyptian mummy at this stage, doesn't it? But you notice the PVA glue has gone rock solid and it's made the tissue paper glue to the newspaper and it's all gone rigid there. And I've even put this little dollop of tissue paper on for a nose. And then take some acrylic paint or even poster paint and paint on the detail of your person. Now, it can be anyone you like. I did me and you can do yourself or your favourite pop star or sports personality. But just take some time to paint on your detail. And again, I'm just going to do it quickly here to show you. Just slopping on the colour. There's the red for my sweatshirt. And if you take some time, you should get quite a good result out of it. Well, when I finished mine, it looked something like this. And there he is, a heavyweight bookend. And you can see here, I've put on all the detail, even his sweatshirt. And I haven't gone for a likeness on the face, I've gone for more of a, a cartoon face. But it's a good effect, isn't it? And when I finished the painting, I waited for it to dry, and then I coated it in PVA glue. And when that goes dry, it goes hard and shiny, and it gives it this great finish. And then... You can use it to prop up your books, on your bookshelves, or on your floor. And if you've got lots of books, why not do two of them, one for the other end? And you can even add in extra bits of detail using scrap card or paper just before you put on the loo roll, like that footballer's ball. And what about some wool for the hair? Try it yourself. A heavyweight bookend.
Things like that do not scare me in the least. Do you want to see my garlic powder picture? <laughs> ah! Mummy! Just take a very quick look at this cartoon that I've drawn. Now, what do you think is missing from the picture? I'll give you a clue. It's something that follows you around all day. Got it? Shadows. But where do you put the shadows in your picture? Well, here's a good tip. Look for the place that the light can't get to. Now, in this picture, the light is coming from this street lamp here. So I'll just chalk that in like that. And it'll be shining out in this direction. And it'll be shining down onto the man, down this side of him. So the light won't be able to get to this side of him. So I'm just going to draw in the shade down his left-hand side there. And, of course, no light will be able to get under the brim of his hat. So I'll put that in. I'm just doing it very quickly like that, putting shadow or shade all the way down that side where the light can't get to. All the time looking for those little nooks and crannies. And put it on his legs as well because the light won't be able to get under his coat. And don't forget, he'll be casting the shadow out across the pavement because the light can't get to it because he's standing in the way. And also up the wall like that. And there it is. Now, one place the light will be coming from in a lot of your pictures is the sun. And when you've drawn your picture, you have to decide where the sun is in your picture. And let's just put it peeping over the horizon there. In fact, it's going down at the end of the day. And then just look for the places that the light can't get to. So on the coach, it'll be in shade at the back there like that. Maybe one of the wheels underneath. And on the horse's bottoms, like that. And they'll be getting a nice suntan up front. And don't forget the coach... I'll be casting out a shadow along the ground. And on the cowboy himself, well, that side will be in light, and this side will be in shade. So he's got all his front with the light nicely shining on the front of it, and all his backside, so to speak, in shadow. Like that, all the way down, just scribbling it in. Great effect. And don't forget on his gun there, and down that arm. And don't forget, he will also be casting a shadow with the light shining between his legs. And out the shadow goes in that direction. And what about the cactus? Yep, you've got it. It's down this side of the cactus like that, with a shadow out in that direction. Try it yourself. Put some shadows into your pictures and look for the places that the light can't get to. At last I know how to draw shadows properly. You draw the places where the light can't get to. Oh! Uh, hey, where's my pencil? Hello, my name's Jane, and I scrape paint across the paper with a piece of serrated card to make this effect of a volcano. My name is Nula and I have done a picture of the bridge using cardboard tools and paint. Hello, my name's Gemma and this is a painting of a forest. I did my tree effect by twisting my card from side to side. Ah, great pictures. And what a good idea, using cardboard as a tool to paint with. Now, this technique reminds me of the technique of the old masters many years ago, the way they used to paint with palette knives. And they used to just smear their paint literally thickly across their paper using a knife. Now, they would probably have used oil paint. I'm just using ordinary poster paint and acrylic paint that I've just squeezed straight from the bottle.
Try it yourself. A card painting. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!